Hari Om, all the students. Very first, I welcome you all to class 10th. And uh, before I start anything today, I just want to say, take maximum precautions, be at home and be safe. That is why we have started with the online classes. That will surely help you before you come to the school. So, you know well, even in class 10th, you have three different teachers for science, that is physics, chemistry and bio. And physics will be done by me. In class 10 physics, we have uh, five chapters that will be done by me. The very first is electricity. Second, we have the magnetic effect of electric current. Then we have light. Then we have sources of energy. And we have the human eye and the colorful world. Out of these five chapters, we have numerical in two chapters maximum. That is the electricity and the light. So, Today I am going to start with the electricity but in this one video I cannot cover the entire chapter because the electricity chapter is quite lengthy one. So I have decided to make one video for one topic. So different videos will be shared with you for different topics that will surely help you to understand the entire chapter. I will be sharing some PPT also which will help you to get the notes, proper notes and uh, let's start the class. Before starting I just want to uh, briefly explain the meaning of electricity and then we will move to the very first topic of this particular chapter so you know you should know electricity is a branch of physics where we study about electric current so electric current and electricity they are not same electricity is a subject and electric current is the physical quantity which we can measure so uh, in this electricity chapter we have different topics that is electric charge, we have electric current, we have circuits, different types of the circuit. We will talk about insulator and conductor, how they are different from each other. Uh, we will talk about Ohm's law that will help you to understand the concept of electric circuit and how to change the current in the same circuit. Uh, we will also understand the different components of the circuit, how they are helping the circuit and how they are useful in the circuit, their function in the circuit. We will have discussion on the battery also, the importance of the battery and the meaning of voltage. We will also have discussion of different instruments which we are using in the circuit like voltmeter and ammeter, how they are useful and how are they helping us. Uh, we will also have discussion on the application of electric current and in this chapter we will just cover one application that is heating effect that was done in class 7 also but in class 10 we will do in uh, detail with some numerical and uh, at the end we have electric power and commercial units of electric energy so overall this chapter is quite interesting and it will surely help you in the field of electric circuit so let's start the class today we'll start with the very first topic that is electric charge and for this i have made the ppt i'll be explaining the ppt that will help you to understand the topic and uh, I'll be doing numerical also that will help you to understand the topic in a better way. So let's start. The so let's start the class. So very first topic in this chapter is electric charge as I told you. And before we understand the meaning, uh, just go through the definition. It's written, it's, it is the property of any matter due to which it experiences force when placed in an external electric field. Now to understand the meaning we will try to take the example of force of gravity. If you remember any object which has mass is attracted by the earth and this force of attraction is also called force of gravity. But this is only possible when the object is placed in the gravitational field of the earth. So we know within some space around the earth the force of gravity exists otherwise the object once escaped from the gravitational field that cannot be attracted by the earth. So same like electric charge is the property of any matter because of it uh, because of which it gets the force that is also called electrostatic force and where it is placed in a field called electric field. So take an example, any object we have which is charged, so around this object we will have electric field and within that field if we place any matter which is also charged, then it will get the force. 
electrostatic force and uh, rest we know if the charges are similar positive and positive it will repel each other otherwise if they are opposite that is positive and negative they will be attracted so from the concept of electrostatic force we basically try to define the electric charge and i hope it is clear next thing is types of the electric charge as you have done in class 8 also we have positive and negative and uh, basic property we know that is positive and negative attract each other positive positive repel and negative negative also repel now next thing is we have uh, the assign unit of electric charge is coulomb that is also written as capital c uh, we know uh, any physical quantity can be measured and if it is measured it will have some unit it will have some si unit also so electric charge is something which we can measure so it has a unit si unit is coulomb so we will be using coulomb for the electric charge unit and uh, next thing you should know uh, till now the smallest charge that we know is the charge of one electron or charge of one proton and the value you can see here it's 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and it is negative for electron and it is positive for proton as you know electron is negative charge and proton is positive charge but their value is same so charge of one electron and charge of one proton is the smallest and uh, that can also be represented by e minus and e plus so now onwards wherever i use uh, e the value will be 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb now let's start with the basic properties of electric charge uh, we will discuss three main properties and uh, that will be more than enough in class 10th and these three will be done with the numerical that will help you to understand the topic in a better way so the very first topic and the property we have is you can see electric charge is conserved meaning of conservation meaning of conserved you have done in class 9th also you have done law of conservation of energy you have done law of conservation of momentum if you remember so if you remember law of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created cannot be destroyed but can be transferred like potential can be converted into kinetic kinetic can be converted into some other form that is possible but if we have an isolated system the total energy of the system will remain constant and meaning of isolated if you remember the system uh, which is not having any exchange with the external atmosphere means nothing will be uh, taken out from the system and nothing will enter the system so that system is basically isolated same like we have the conservation of charge so within an isolated system the electric charge is always constant but it is possible within the system same system the charge can be transferred from one to the other so statement is very clear total charge of an isolated system is constant that is charge cannot can be can be transferred from one to the other but overall charge of any isolated system is always constant or in other way we can say electric charge can neither be neither be created nor be destroyed but can be transferred from one to the other now to understand this let's take an explanation take the explanation so uh, i have taken two objects and let these two objects be neutral a and b meaning of neutral you know the object will have equal number of positive and negative so take an example uh, the atom itself is neutral you know in any atom we have equal number of protons and electrons so overall they cancel out each other so atom is neutral so we are talking about two different objects a and b which are totally neutral and these two a and b are forming a system that is also isolated so a and b are present in one system that is isolated system so since both are neutral so if you add the charge of a and charge of b so it will be zero because overall a and b are also neutral so we can say the system is neutral now take an example uh, there is a transfer of electrons from a to b so what i have done let's take from a five electrons are transferred to b 
so since a has the loss of 5 electrons it will get positive 5 charge and b will have the gain of 5 electrons so b will have negative 5 charge so overall a is getting plus 5 charge and b is getting minus 5 of charge because of gain and loss of electrons so overall now the charge of a and charge of b we added together that is plus 5b and minus 5b that will sum again to make 0 so you can see again now the overall charge of the system is 0 but still there is a transfer of electron from a to b so we can say within this isolated system that is made up of a and b the total charge is 0 but still it is possible the charge can be transferred so a has not uh, a has lost 5 charges 5 electrons that is gained by b but overall these 5 electrons are within the same system these are not destroyed and we have not even created the 5 electrons so i hope this meaning is very clear and uh, again to understand uh, i have written the definition also isolated system means the system uh, that has no communication with external atmosphere and uh, there is no exchange between the system and the external atmosphere i hope this is clear to you so we can move to the next part the next property we have that is electric charge is additive in nature <coughs> Let us understand the meaning. Now take a neutral object and let us uh, neutral object, let neutral object is getting different charges plus 6 coulomb, plus 12 coulomb and minus 10 coulomb. So these three different charges are added to the neutral object. So overall the total charge of this system will be plus 6 coulomb, plus 12 coulomb, plus minus 10 coulomb. So if you add it together, it's getting plus 8 coulomb. So total charge is plus 8 coulomb. So this is how we add the charges for, for any object. <coughs> so when any charges are added, we just need to add it together to get the overall charge. But we need to take care of the positive and negative sign. So we can say charge is additive in nature. So it's written here. To find net or equivalent charge of any object, we need to add all the individual charges taking care of positive and negative sign. That is, if capital Q is the total charge of the object, that will be equal to small q1, small q2, small q3, that is add, adding all the charges together. Where capital Q is the total charge and q1, q2, q3 are basically the small charges. So, we are moving to the third. I hope the first and second properties are clear but still if you have any doubt you can share your doubts I will be able to answer and the third one the last property we have is electric charge is quantized so this is somehow different that we need to understand quantized is basically coming from the word called quantum and quantum basically is nothing but number so quantum mechanics we have quantum physics we have that will be done in high classes but here quantum basically means number so let's understand the meaning uh, before we start you can read this it means that the net charge of any object is an is an integral multiple of charge of an electron that is capital q is equal to ad where q is equal to net charge of any object and in number of electrons gain or loss by the object and a the value 1.6 it depends the power minus 90 kilo so let's understand the meaning <coughs> so for understanding i have already taken the example an object can have loss or gain of electrons in whole number only that is any object can lose or gain 1 2 3 4 and electrons it's very simple to understand like if object A has loss of electrons, B will have gain of electrons. So overall this number of electrons that is gain or lost will be in whole numbers only. We can have one loss of electron, two loss, three, la three electrons, four electrons. We can have gain of four electrons, five electrons. Because we know the electron is the smallest charge known to us. So we cannot divide the electron. So there cannot be loss of 1.5 electron, 2.5 electron. So the loss or gain of electrons will always be in whole number. So, any object that will have the charge positive or negative that will be decided by how many electrons are lost or gained by the object. So, 
to calculate the charge of any object we need to know the total number of electrons that is gained or lost and rest we know the charge of one electron so we can multiply to get the total charge so one example is taken here <clears throat> if a neutral object has loss of 10 electrons then its net charge will be q is equal to plus 10 e now since the object has the loss of electron that is the loss of negative charge it will get positive charge so how many charges that is the uh, 10 into e where 10 is the loss of electrons and e is the charge of one electron which we know the value 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so overall the net charge of this object will be plus 16 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb now just take the opposite case if the object will get gain the 10 electrons then its net charge will be minus 10 e that is minus 10 into 10 to the power minus uh, 10 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb which is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so in this case since there is a gain of electrons 10 electrons the total charge will be 10 e so overall we can say when there is a loss of electrons by the object it is getting positive charge and when there is a gain of electrons the object is getting negative charge but in any case any object cannot have loss or gain of 2.5, 3.5, 7.9 etc. electrons as the electron is the smallest charge known to us the electron charge electronic charge cannot split that is q is equal to 3.5 e q is equal to 2.5 e etc. is not possible because 3.5 e basically means 3.5 electron is received or gained by the object which is not possible same 2.5 e is not possible so we can say overall uh, total charge of the object will be integral multiple of charge of one electron that is n e where n is always a natural number 1 2 3 4 5 6 and all something like that so i hope this is somehow clear and we got one formula also charge of any object is overall equal to n e where n is thus number of electrons of the charge and is the charge of one electron now we are going to start with the numerical based on this last property that is charge is quantized so we are going to use the formula q is equal to n e so the very first numerical you can see here the net charge of an object is plus 9 coulomb find the number of electrons the object has lost to acquire the char given charge so we are given plus 9 coulomb charge plus 9 so it is understood it is positive means it has lost the electrons now how many electrons are lost by this object we we need to find out so how will you solve it so very first the things which are given to us we must write down total charge is given plus 9 coulomb and we know the value of small e that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and we need to find n and we have very simple formula q is equal to any so n will be q by e putting the values we are getting 5625 into 10 to the power minus 16 electrons note you can read it's very uh, you can read it's very important it's written like uh, if you will calculate this number it is coming 5.625 but we know we are calculating the number of electrons which cannot be in decimal so we must convert this decimal into whole number so finally you can see 5.625 is converted into 5625 and that is how we have to answer if we are going to find out the number of electrons uh, now take, take the next example next numerical we have here uh, this written an object has net charge of minus 20 coulomb find the number of electrons gained by it to acquire the given charge so now in this case we are given a uh, object which is negatively charged and uh, we need to find the number of electrons that are gained by it so since the charge is negative it is understood the electrons are gained by the object so we can say the given thing that we have here is total charge is minus 20 coulomb 
the value of e we know small e 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and we need to find n so we will take the same formula q is equal to n e so n is equal to q by e and uh, solving this we are getting 125 into 10 to the power 18 electrons so again we have converted 12.5 into 125 so decimal numbers should not be given when we are finding the number of electrons now note when we are doing the numerical based on q is equal to n e and we are finding the number of electrons then when we are putting the value of total charge given we just need to take the value and should not take negative in any case because we know the number of number of electrons cannot be negative so it's written here when we calculate the number of electrons we just have to see the net charge and not the positive or negative charge as number of electrons must be positive in all the cases that is all the time that is what we have done in numerical 1 and 2 now we are moving to the next third numerical it's uh, written if a neutral object gains 20 into 10 to the power 10 electrons find the net charge of this object so the very first there is a gain of electrons so it is understood the object will get the negative charge and uh, so when we are doing the numerical at last the final answer must come in negative so when we are doing the numerical based on the charge or to find the charge that must be done with the sign positive and negative so here we have the importance of negative and positive so it's very clear the given thing we have number of electrons 20 into 10 to the power 10 electrons the value of e we know but in this case we are finding the total charge so formula is same q is equal to any and q is equal to minus 20 into 10 to the power 10 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 that is minus 32 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb final answer so only thing is you can see negative sign is used because the charge will be negative since the electrons are gained by the object so the note is same negative sign is taken as there is a gain of electrons so there is uh, this is to be taken care if there is a gain of electrons the net charge must come in negative and if there is a loss of electrons the net charge must be positive so that is the end of this topic and i hope it is understood and we'll continue uh, with the next very soon thank you